Suella Braverman speaking to us exclusively and her com comments come as the Prime Minister launches a plan to fast-track thousands of asylum cases to try and tackle the massive backlog. Uh, we're talking about 12,000 migrants here. They're going to be assessed without an interview instead of filling out uh, a questionnaire. Normally that questionnaire is about 10 pages long. Well, joining us now is political analyst Leon Emerali. Uh, good morning. Always good to see you, Leon. Um, first of all, your reaction to some of the comments being made by the Home Secretary there. I think it was a fascinating interview. I mean, she clearly is setting out her stall that actually Rishi Sunak has to get this Brexit deal right. Otherwise, you know, she could be one of those high profile uh, potential resignations. I do think it's a really interesting interview, the way that she was dangling it away from the Brexit deal, you know, trying to prioritise uh, the, the issue of small boats, trying to prioritise uh, migration, legal migration in particular. And I think it's easy to say words on those topics, but very hard to mm -hmm. implement. So what do you make then of these 12,000 cases that are set to be fast-tracked with just a, a quick 10-minute job rather than the long document involved? Some people are saying it's an amnesty in all but name. They're all going to get ushered through. Indeed. I mean, I think details on that still are quite loose, but um, on the face of it, it does seem as though it will be uh, you know, a fast track, as you say, Isabel. So I think for a lot of people who have concerns about what's already happening with, with immigration, this seems almost like it's making it easier rather than potentially putting up barriers, which a lot of people will want to see. Uh, and yet we're getting these immigration stats out at half past nine this morning. Um, some previews have been floating around. We're expecting that backlog to pass 150,000. That's up 50,000 in the last 12 months and the cost of that, the upkeep of those uh, people waiting to have their cases heard, £2.1 billion pounds a year. You can understand why it's a priority for the Prime Minister, but will he be able to fix it? It's quite extraordinary, isn't it, when you look at those figures and you hear about, you know, hotels and all the rest of it that's bubbling up around this narrative. And I do think the Prime Minister has to tackle this. It's one of those key issues that people uh, on, the, on the right of the political spectrum care about. And if he cannot get it sorted, if he cannot create some sort of solution that allows us to get taxpayer uh, value for money, as well as also being a compassionate, kind country that he pledges to do, uh, then I think he, he's going to face difficulty. But it's a really difficult balancing act and it's no easy task. Um, I want to just ask your opinion about Shamima Begum. Um, having worked in government, um, you've got quite a different position from perhaps many of those that you were working alongside when you were inside Downing Street? Yeah, it's an interesting one, Shamima Begum. I think that, for me, it doesn't sit quite right that she's ultimately a British citizen. She's our problem. And I think she should come back to the UK to face justice here. It doesn't seem right that a, a Home Secretary can simply decide on a whim that someone is no longer a British citizen. And I think we have to uh, go along those lines and, and, be, and do things by the book. OK, I mean, well, it has been done by the book, arguably, in the sense that the courts have have rejected her appeals and, and, as you say, the Home Secretary using power he's legitimately, or she now, uh, in, in Suella Braverman's case, has got. But it does create a problem, doesn't it, in these stateless sort of refugee camps? What will become of these people um, and could it actually create more problems than it solves by having people who are disaffected and, and, and vulnerable and previously extreme? Yeah. Perhaps still extreme. Absolutely. We have to look at the UK's position in this globally. So we are seeing other countries like France who are now beginning to take back some uh, individuals who did go to, to Syria and Iraq during that period. They are now starting to come back and the UK is an outlier. Now, some may argue that is a good thing and, and there is a good argument for that. But I do think that ultimately we have to be responsible for for, uh, for people who, who have a British passport, who are British citizens, and it has to be done in, in the right way. Interesting. Leon Emerali.